Rockstar Games are one of the most cheeky development companies in the entire world. Today, we're going to be covering every single time Rockstar referenced an old GTA or any of their games in GTA 5. If you think we missed any, let us know in the comments below. Let's go. During the setup for the jewelry store heist in single player, Lester mentions an Eastern European man who was making moves back in Liberty City. This is a definitive reference to Nico, the protagonist of GTA 4, and it also suggests that he either retired or died, seeing as Lester says he went quiet. There was a, an Eastern European guy making moves in Liberty City, but uh, he went quiet. However, there's also another Nico Easter egg in GTA 5, where many characters who are on computers are actually browsing Nico's Life Invader page. This page is active, which is likely showing that Nico is still alive. At the Yellow Jack Inn in Sandy Shores, here you can see four shields. The top two have the words Best of Show 2008 with a motorbike engraved. This is a reference to the year that GTA 4 came out and the expansion Lost and Damned. The middle shield says Best of Show 2010 with an engraving of a stagecoach wheel. This is a reference to Red Dead Redemption and its release year. Next to Franklin's original house in story mode, there's a massive mural on the wall that says, Welcome back, we missed you last time. This is a reference to players who played San Andreas. On this wall next to the Union Depository, there's some graffiti on the wall that says Los Santos, but the font is the exact same that Rockstar used for the original Grand Theft Auto game way back over 25 years ago. In the Yellow Jack Inn, there's a picture here of someone driving a tow truck. That person looks exactly like Nico Bellic. Actually, no, that's literally just Nico Bellic. Around the map, you'll find newspapers all over the ground. Many of these have pictures of Johnny Klebitz from Lost and the Damned in GTA 4, along with the headline, Loves Hate Relationship with Taxes. In the back rooms of the Vanilla Unicorn, there's a sticker on one of the lockers that says Honkers. This is an Easter egg to the Honkers Gentleman Club in GTA 4. In GTA 5, we got Vanilla Unicorn. In GTA 4, it was Honkers. In any two-car garage that you can buy, up on this shelf here, there'll be a license plate that says Liberty City. Unfortunately, though, we can't get these license plates on our own cars, at least not yet. Deep underwater, you can find the famous hat from the TV series Lost. Now, it's not actually possible to get close to the hatch because the water pressure will just kill you. But if you go near the hatch, you'll hear someone knocking on the other side. This is actually a message in Morse code that translates to, hey, you never call, how'd you fancy going bowling? Which, of course, is a reference to Roman in GTA 4 who would always call Nico up asking to go bowling. The Los Santos Country Golf Club was established in 1992 which of course is a throwback to the year that GTA San Andreas was set in. There's a marking on the side of the train that says LS 2004, or in other words, Los Santos 2004, which is the year that GTA San Andreas was released. As you enter the Yellow Jack Inn, on the left of the entrance, there's a coat. This jacket is very, very similar to Nico's first brown jacket. On the right side of the Del Perro Pier, there's a piece of graffiti that says nothing to see here, groove along, with a little smiley face next to it, which is a throwback to a reference to a similar sign in GTA 3. The San Andreas Flight School was established in 2004, which is another throwback to San Andreas' release year. That's pretty neat. In a lot of the vehicles in the launch version of GTA 5, if you go into first person and have a look at the actual GPS in the car, that GPS shows a map of Liberty City. This could either be an Easter egg or just a reused asset from GTA 4 that Rockstar couldn't be bothered to update. Occasionally, when you pull a civilian out of their car and steal it, they'll yell out, I'm moving to Vice City. This could be seen as a throwback to GTA Vice City or maybe an Easter egg to GTA 6. Who knows what Rockstar was thinking? I'm moving to Vice City. I don't want to die! There was a somewhat minor character in Grand Theft Auto Vice City. His name is BJ Smith. He's referenced a couple of times here. First off, we have the Recreation Center, named after him, as well as one of the convenience stores in East Vinewood, BJ's Market. There's a random event in GTA Online where players can rescue Patrick McGreary from the police. If you choose to do so, Packy will say that Liberty City was easier to rob. 
That's because Packy is a character from GTA 4 who is part of Nico's crew. After you rescue him, you can actually use him in the Diamond Casino Heist. And Packy is also in single player where he mentions that Nico is most likely dead, but he doesn't know that for a fact. Packy McCreary from the fine borough of Dukes in God's own Liberty City. I came to LS seeking fame and fortune and I found boredom and idiots. There's a homeless guy in Vespucci Beach that holds up a sign saying, Serbian bad guys stole all my money, which could be another reference to Nico. Along the water in Vespucci Beach, you'll often see a few beach towers that say, I heart of Vice City. Behind the counter in the Yellow Jack Inn, you can see several $69 bills hanging on the wall here. The image on these bills is the famous cover girl for GTA San Andreas. The bills also say 10, 12, 2004, 6 p.m which is 14 days before GTA San Andreas released. Strange. In Textile City, there's a wholesale and retail store called Broker, which is a reference to the borough of Broker in Liberty City from GTA 4. You can tell by the skyline on top of the logo. In your arcade, you can play the game Cubed, which is actually a game that was introduced in GTA 4. Next to the Vinewood Sports LS store in Harwick, there's actually a billboard of Tony, a radio DJ from the 3D universe. Right next to that on the billboard next to it is an artwork of the famous GTA twins painted on this building. Just another one of GTA's famous poster girls. On certain weapons from Ammunition, you can buy the Yusuf Amir luxury finish. This is a reference to the character Yusuf Amir from The Ballad of Gay Tony. In the in-game movies, two of the movies, Capola Voro and Meltdown, make use of very popular locations from GTA 4, like the heart of Liberty City. One of the possible heist outfits, the green boiler suit with the hockey mask, this is a reference to the movie Heat. What's interesting though is this movie was previously referenced in a similar way on the heist mission planned at the Malibu Club in GTA Vice City. One of the best easter eggs in all of GTA 5, during the mission Hood Safari, right as you enter Grove Street, there's a chance that you'll see three people driving BMXs down Grove Street away from the cul-de-sac. If you get a close look at these guys, they're dressed the exact same as CJ, Sweet, and Big Smoke, and this is a very clear reference to the Sweet and Kendall mission in GTA San Andreas. You just a liability, CJ! Why you bother coming back? Straight Damn. back into the game, right, dog? When Michael enters his house, there's a chance he'll get the voice line where he says, Daddy's back, bitches. Daddy's back, bitches. This is an Easter egg to the very first line from the beginning of GTA 4, where one of the characters yells out, Daddy's back, you bitches. So they took out the you, but the rest of it, clear reference. Daddy's back, you bitches! Rockstar made it possible for you to buy clothes and a haircut for Michael that makes him look almost exactly like the default attire of Tommy Vassetti. During the mission Derailed, one of the requirements to get the gold medal is to land on the train on your first jump. The title for this challenge is called Better Than CJ, of course a reference back to San Andreas in the mission Wrong Side of the Tracks. If Trevor's listening to the radio in his own car, his Bodie, there's a chance to hear a conversation between a truck driver and another guy who goes by the name Eddie Lowe. Eddie Lowe was a serial killer that could be found in Alderney by Nico in GTA 4. This is Eddie Lowe. I just damn near clipped that electric Eddie. Eddie Lowe? That's me. Ain't you a serial killer? Yeah, very funny. So what if we had the same name? You think I'd be driving a truck all day if I was a serial killer? I thought all you truckers were serial killers. Screw you! What the hell you do for a living? I'm a security guard. Ha! A damn rent-a-cop! Go sit in the chair and watch the world go back! Hey, don't be mad at me because you're a truck driver with a serial killer's name! Occasionally, when Trevor runs over pedestrians in a vehicle, he'll shout out the voice line 10 points, which is, of course, a reference back to the original Grand Theft Auto where you would get 10 points for running over a civilian. 10 points! 
On the side of a highway, there's actually a massive number of letters here. Each of these numbers corresponds to a letter of the alphabet, and if you decipher the code, it says all you had to do was follow the damn train, CJ. Of course, another reference back to wrong side of the tracks from GTA San Andreas. All we had to do was follow the damn train, CJ! Your GTA Online character could quite literally be one of the children of the famous GTA characters that have come before us. In the character creator, you can choose your character's father to be Claude from GTA 3, John Marston from Red Dead Redemption, or Nico Bellic from GTA 4. In many apartments in GTA 5, if you go into your bathroom, you'll see your toothpaste there, but the toothpaste says CJ's toothpaste, another reference to San Andreas. In Franklin's second house in Vinewood Hills, there's three gold records on the wall. One of them belongs to OG Loke from GTA San Andreas. There's also a Mad Dog CD sitting on top of the DJ booth and a red and blue colored artwork of Mad Dog with Mad written across the bottom. Also in Franklin's house in Vinewood Hills, on one of the bookshelves there's a book called The Liberty King with the face of Donald Love from GTA 3. In Lester's house there's a book called Surveillance on the bookshelf. On that book is a picture of CJ. There's a private taxi fare mission that you can complete as Franklin. At the end of that mission, there'll be a couple cars with interesting number plates. One of them says Nico B, and the other one says Roman B. References to Nico and Roman from GTA 4. Around the map, you can find wanted posters for Nico from GTA 4 that say in big bold font, wanted assault with a deadly weapon. There's a random robbery event in GTA 5 story mode where you can choose to save Brucey and Packy and run them away from the cops. Packy, who we mentioned before, is from GTA 4. Good kid, you good kid. Let's lose this heat. In the mission I Fought the Law, Michael and Trevor are dressed as police officers on motorcycles. They then throw their half-eaten donuts on the ground. Them doing this is a reference to reuniting the families, a mission from San Andreas, where during that mission, two cops on motorbikes drop their donuts on the ground and begin to chase CJ, Sweet, Ryder, and Big Smoke. In the mission, Mr. Phillips, Terry, and Clay, two bikers from Lost and the Damned in GTA 4, try to escape from Trevor. And unfortunately, they didn't last too long. Speaking of Lost and Damned characters that didn't last too long, in the same mission, in the starting cutscene, Johnny Klebitz kind of got curb stomped by Trevor, and people were kind of upset about this considering he was a pretty big character in GTA 4's DLC. Laszlo, one of the side characters in GTA 5 and GTA Online, has actually been a DJ in radio stations from all GTA games. So no surprise to see Rockstar include him in GTA 5. Unfortunately though, he has now since left Rockstar Games, so we'll have to see if he appears in GTA 6. In the mission, Mr. Richards, Michael is tasked with going to return Rocco Pelosi, who's a character from The Ballad of Gay Tony. Just like many characters who made cameos, they ended up dying and so did Rocco by the hand of Michael. Karen Daniels, Nico's first girlfriend in GTA 4 who ended up ratting him out, plays a part in a few missions in GTA 5 and GTA Online, first in the Three's Company story mission, as well as the Humane Labs raid in GTA Online. This character has changed identity several times working for the IAA across multiple games. Jacob, what are you doing here? This is no place for you, Michelle. As it happens, it is. You see, Nico, I have been working for the government. The character named Bernard, or as we more commonly know him in GTA Online, Agent ULP, is actually a returning character from GTA 4, where he ended up blackmailing Nico. There. Here he is. I can see that. Thanks, Karen. But I'm fighting with them. And guess what? So are you. Now let's get into the easter eggs and references from other Rockstar games. The Dignity Super Yacht is extremely similar, almost directly copied from the boat that's in the beginning mission of Max Payne 3. Now that's definitely an interesting way to reuse assets. There's an interesting book in Franklin's bookshelf in his Vinewood Hills home. This book here is titled Red Dead and it's written by Jay Marsden. People have speculated that this could actually be John Marsden's son, Jack who stated in Red Dead that he might actually write a book himself one day. 
Well, maybe this is it. In Los Santos, there's a company called Escalera. This is a renter car business, and this is an Easter egg from Red Dead Redemption, where there's a town with the same name. To be clear, right, the town name's not renter car, it's Escalera. If you go to Suburban as Michael, similar to the Tommy Vassetti Easter egg, you can buy a shirt that's very similar to one Max Payne wears. During the story mission, Daddy's Little Girl, the guy you rent the bike from at the bike rental place on Vespucci Beach is actually wearing a John Marston t-shirt. Similar to the Daddy's Back voice line by Michael, he'll also occasionally say, Honey, I'm home. Honey, I'm home. Now, obviously, this is a common phrase, but this is the exact same line that Max Payne used during a cutscene where he entered his home, realizing that it was attacked. And what's funny is Michael has the same thing happen to him in the mission Meltdown. Honey, I'm home. One of the in-game TV commercials for Up and Atom Burger is set in the year 1950. This footage actually reuses images from LA Noir, which of course is another Rockstar game. There's an NPC that can spawn outside the vanilla unicorn wearing a jersey that says Hopkins on the back, referencing the main character in Bully, Jimmy Hopkins. There's a cafe in Vinewood called Cafe Redemption. This is most likely an Easter egg to Red Dead Redemption, of course. Over in Strawberry, there's a lot of graffiti. One of them, this one here, looks like a silhouette of John Marston. Another cool nod to Red Dead. During the drive to the Polito score, Michael will mention his first heist. He'll talk about how it was on the outskirts of Casa City in 1988. This is a neat little easter egg to Rockstar's game Manhunt that was set in Casa City. Not me? Huh? Mikey, bro, what was your first bank score? 88, outskirts of Casa City. Took a small franchise for 10G. Yeah, things were easier back then. If you played GTA 5's story, you'd know that Michael DeSanta's real last name is Townley. DeSanta is the name that the FIB gave to Michael under, well, witness protection. And the surname DeSanta is a reference to Captain DeSanta, who is a major antagonist in Red Dead Redemption. The Elysian Fields Freeway is a reference to the Elysian Fields Development Company from LA Noir. At the mask store, you can buy a pig mask, which is very, very close to Pigsy from Manhunt. Rockstar really thought of Easter eggs absolutely everywhere. In your arcade, there's a minigame called Nazar Speaks. Madame Nazar is a character from Red Dead Redemption 2. There's also a hidden easter egg where you can get a phone number that you dial that lets you speak to Madame Nazar, which of course is terrifying considering she has been dead for a very long time. And that is every Easter egg about old GTAs or other Rockstar games in GTA 5.